Hey guys, I'm Moises Amaya, and today we're going to review the final episode of the assassination of Gianni Versace. I know, it all went by so fast, so let's get right to it. So the final episode begins just like the first episode began, with Gianni Versace getting shot right there in Miami Beach. We then see Andrew Cunanan break into some building, and I couldn't tell that this was a houseboat because it just looked like an apartment building to me, a very boxy apartment building. As soon as Andrew breaks into the place, he heads to the fridge and he gets some champagne because you know bubbles help you relax he then turns on the tv and sees dan rather reporting on johnny versace's death and he he hears his own name called and that really excites him it's like an oh my god moment you know the moment he hears andrew cunan and the name said by Dan Rather and he he gets just like filled with like emotion at that moment. There's so much giddy delight welled up in Andrew that he actually makes the champagne explode spontaneously. Cunanan then says, oh my god, oh my god. And then he heads to the top to the roof of the houseboat with the champagne, finds some lounge chair there, sits there while he observes the manhunt going on over South Beach and just takes a big swig of the champagne. Kind of like that. We then cut to Tampa, Florida, and they show us Marilyn Miglin. I love Marilyn Miglin. And it's the FBI knocking on her door, and she immediately says, is it that man? The FBI then goes ahead and debriefs her and lets her, and lets her know everything that they know about Andrew Cunanan. She then says to them, you know, you've had two months Two months and what have you done? You haven't been able to catch him. And she doesn't refer to Andrew by name or Cunanan. She never says Andrew Cunanan. She just says that man. She says she refuses to, to say his name. She won't say his name. The FBI then tells her that she should be, you know, fearing for her life and that maybe it would be wise for her not to broadcast from Tampa. But she tells them in a very serious tone, you provide whatever security is necessary. I have never missed a broadcast in my life. Damn, I just love how tough she is. We then cut to the next morning and Andrew turns on the TV and he sees the news and he sees Marilyn Miglin giving like a press conference or, or talking to the media. And she talks about how Lee Miglin was her prince and how her life was a fairy tale. In her mind, that was a fairy tale. And she's right, it was a fairy tale because fairy tales aren't real. This dream life she had with Lee was all in her mind. I mean, he was out, you know, banging, Andrew and male escorts. It was all in her mind, this fairy tale. We then see Andrew put on this bright yellow outfit, which is kind of weird because, you know, yellow is a very, you know, attention getting color. So I, I'm not sure why he wore yellow. But uh, he then goes and lifts a purse off some from some lady's table at a restaurant and he steals her car and he's trying to get, you know, away from Miami. Now there's like a lot of little islands around Miami. So I think he's He's stuck in some area where he needs to go across a bridge. But all the bridges are closed and there's checkpoints everywhere. And he can't get off the island. He gets to a place where he has to make a U-turn because uh, the cops are like ahead on the road and he doesn't want to get caught. So he turns around and then he parks his car and some old man sees him and he's like, like, do you need, do you need help, son? And he's like, yeah, how do I get off the island? And the old man says, well, you know, there's, there's, uh, there, there's checkpoints everywhere, son. You're not going to be able to get off this island. And he's like, what's your name, son? And then, uh, and then he's like, oh, I'm Kirk the Mars. After that, in a fit of rage, Andrew gets the keys and throws them into the water and does one of these famous screams. He goes, ah! Then they show the FBI showing up at Andrew's mother's house, Marianne. And the first thing Marianne says, have you killed my son? We then see the paparazzi and the media whipped up into a frenzy surrounding Marianne and she's whisked into a police car, I guess for interrogation. They then show us Ronnie being interrogated by the FBI or the cops. And he's, he's like, yeah, sure, you're looking for him now, but you were disgusted by him before he became disgusting. And that's like totally true because they didn't care about Andrew before when he was just killing uh, normal gays. It's, it wasn't until he killed Versace that they even started to care. He also says, Andrew wanted you to know about his pain. Andrew is not hiding. We then see Andrew break into a boat and as soon as he breaks in, like some lady follows him like right in. And the lady's like, Guillermo? And uh, Andrew stays like really like super like still and quiet. But the lady has like a bad feeling. And then they show like the cops or the FBI heading there towards the boat. But by then Andrew's like long gone. 
and he's back at home now and and he's watching TV and he sees his friend, you know, his girlfriend Lizzie on the TV pleading for him to turn himself in because you know she knows the real Andrew. She tells Andrew to show the side of of you that I know. At this point honestly, it's like too late. Even if Andrew turns himself in and he's all sweet and stuff, he has all these murders on his rap sheet. It's like over. It's like it doesn't matter what he does. He's like screwed. We then see a news program that's in the style of Dateline or 2020 and they're talking about Andrew Cunanan and his victims and they're actually interviewing one of the victim's parents, uh, uh, David Matson's father, Howard Matson. And the interview, the reporter asks the father, you know, why didn't David run? And I'm like that too. I'm like, it, why didn't David run? He had so many chances to run. But like I said, it's probably a mind control thing. But still, he had so many chances to run, you guys. And because the cops are on the lookout for Andrew, he can't leave, you know, the apartment. So he's running out of food and he actually resorts to trying to eat dog food. I mean, he tries, but he spits it out right away. So this is a sign that he's not that desperate yet because you know, if you're like really starving, you're like, you'll eat insects. Now at this point, Andrew's becoming more and more desperate. So he actually calls his father in the Philippines and he's like, dad, dad, I'm in trouble. I need help. I need you to come get me. And the dad Modesto says, Stop crying, men don't cry, and I'll be over in 24 hours, just wait. And that satisfies Andrew. Now Andrew has faith in his father and he packs, and he waits, and he waits, and he waits. Newsflash Andrew, your dad's not gonna come. In fact, Andrew turns on the TV and sees his dad being interviewed from the Philippines by a reporter. And the dad's talking about how he spoke with Andrew recently and that you're never gonna catch him. He's far too smart. He is a genius. And then they asked him, well, what can you tell us? What did you actually speak about? And he's like, well, we talked about the movie rights. We talked about who's gonna play him and, and uh, his story. And this is the best part. Modesto already even has a title for the movie. The name of the movie is gonna be A Name to Be Remembered By. It's a good title. We now travel to July 22nd, 1997, the day of Versace's funeral. And they show Ricky Martin, Antonio, uh, speaking with Donatella. Donatella asks him, you know, what will you do now? And Ricky Martin's like, well, I think I'll stay here in the Lake Como house. To which Donatella replies, you know, we don't own any of those houses anymore. He spent too much money. The company was forced to take possession of all the properties. They are controlled by the board of Versace. And this is like shocking to Ricky Martin because you know, he spent his whole life with Versace. I mean, he's basically his husband and now they wanna just get rid of him like a piece of trash is what he says. And I'm surprised that at that moment, he wasn't like, but aren't you the head of the board? It's like, it's your company. I mean, yeah, maybe there's shareholders, but you have a say, you have like a big influence and say in this, like you can just say, give, Antonio this little apartment in Milan or something. It's like you don't have to just kick him off on this onto the street So at the 46 minute mark is when Andrew must be ravenously hungry Because he's actually eating the dog food at that moment And he's also watching the Versace funeral on TV and even Princess Diana is attending it I'm sure Queen Elizabeth didn't approve of Diana going to that funeral I can just hear her saying something like this. It's not appropriate for a princess to attend the funeral of a homosexual. Some people say Queen Elizabeth is a reptile. It, there's a, like a lot of crazy fun videos. Just type in Queen Elizabeth reptilian into YouTube search. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Now at the funeral, Antonio Ricky Martin is not mentioned as one of Gianni Versace's loved ones, which is such a rotten, cold, evil thing to do. Also the priest that's uh, presiding over the funeral refuses to touch Antonio's hand. They then play some really beautiful choir music and they show Andrew shaving his head, I guess to change his appearance. We then cut to a scene where an old guy gets a phone call and uh, he's like, yeah, I'll be right there. And he writes into some pad 54th street and he goes to, to the house, the houseboat where Andrew is. And as he walks in, Andrew's there like on the second floor and he shoots his gun. And uh, he doesn't shoot it at the old man, but the old man gets startled, he falls to the ground, and then he runs out of the house. And then I guess the police and the FBI are notified, and they all swarm onto the houseboat. The police arrive, the SWAT teams are outside, the media, it's just like a big, you know, hurricane of craziness. Andrew is starting to come to terms with his own mortality, and he's actually having hallucinations. He sees like a kid version of himself. Then they show, they show him get a gun, 
and just put it in his mouth. And then he pulls the trigger. As soon as he pulls the trigger, we're transported back in time to that night when he went to the opera and he met Gianni Versace there on the stage of the opera house. And uh, we see Andrew, you know, trying to be charming with, with Versace, but Versace's not having it. He's just not into you. You know, he's not into him. He says, you know, I want to be a designer. Do you need an assistant? And he's like, I don't, you want to be a designer? And, and then he's like, I don't need an assistant. And he just tries to like slowly let him down but it really crushes Andrew. So basically Versace rejected Andrew and I guess that's why he killed him because of that moment. They then show us Marilyn Miglin at Home Shopping Network and she just finished her taping and she asks, you caught him? And they're like, he shot himself. And she just says, good, it's over. And in the final minutes of the show, we go back to Lake Como in Italy and uh, they show us Antonio and Donatella speaking. And Donatella tells this story about the last day uh, that, that Gianni was alive, that she was doing a fashion show in Rome and he wanted to know all the details so he called in the morning and then he called I think later on in the day but she didn't want to deal with that so so she ignored the call and how you know guilty she feels for not answering that call. I mean come on you, you never know when someone's gonna die it's like she shouldn't feel that guilty. We also see Antonio Ricky Martin so depressed that he takes a bunch of pills to try to kill himself that he doesn't uh, he doesn't die he actually uh, survives, in case you guys were wondering. And the very, very final scenes are scenes of where Gianni Versace's ashes are being kept in some very pretty, like, I don't know, urn place. They juxtapose where Andrew's crypt is, you know, uh, where his dead body is being laid and it just, you know, fades to black and that's it. So the episode does leave you feeling sad. You're like, wow, you're like, man. So as a whole, the series was excellent. It was like really good. The acting was great. The direction was great. The visuals were great. I mean, it was a great show in general, but I can also see why it didn't resonate greatly with like more people because, you know, some people, they still have a problem with, with gays and uh, some people, you know, they just weren't interested in, in this story for whatever reason. You can see why the Versace family didn't want this this to go to the air, especially Donatella, because you know, she's not painted in the best light. You know, she comes across like really cold, uncaring. Now in honor of this being our last episode or the finale episode, I'm gonna open this champagne. This will be like our wrap party treat. Now I wanna make a toast to all my subscribers, especially the ones that have been with me since the beginning. Thank you. And I wanna invite you guys to follow me to my next set of reviews. I'm gonna start reviewing that new show, uh, the one called Trust, because it's about rich people and their problem. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Oh, perfection. <laughs>